What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to show you how you can call GraphQL queries from within your Laravel app. So I just finished up a GraphQL series with Laravel as the GraphQL server and Vue as the client. So I was wondering how I can make GraphQL queries from within Laravel as the client. So it's the same case if you're just building a traditional server rendered app and you need to make HTTP requests, you'd probably make use of a library like Guzzle or Curl. I want to see how to do the same, but for GraphQL. So I'll show you a few ways and a few packages to accomplish this. So the first one is this package here, which is specific for PHP. And I actually have a Laravel app scaffolded out here already, and we'll just make use of that. So let's just compose and require this. Okay. And let's see how to use this. So it says within OAuth 2 provider, we'll do it without OAuth 2. Okay, so it looks like it's instantiating it here, passing in the GraphQL endpoint here, and then here's the GraphQL query here, and some variables, and there's a response. So yeah, all these libraries just use Guzzle under the hood because if you look at GraphQL queries, they're just HTTP requests and Guzzle is the most popular one for PHP. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna work in the routes file. So I'll just work in here and paste everything in here. So let's paste that in. And I am going to make use of this endpoint that we did in the GraphQL series. If you don't know, if you haven't seen that, I made an app, a book recommendation app, and this is the endpoint for that. So let's grab this and let's paste it in here. And here is where our query goes. So this operator, I actually didn't know what that was. I had to look it up. It's just a way to do strings, but that's doesn't look right to me because I've never used it before. So I'll just use normal strings and we can just close it here and we don't need this. And this st should, should still work. Okay, so let's just paste in this query we have here that we know works because we can see it here. So I'll get rid of this, paste it in. And this should work. So we don't have any variables. So we can just leave it actually. I think it will just ignore it. And after this, let's just die and dump the response. See if we get anything. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, so it looks like we get a response. And let's see what we have here. So there's our books right there. So we can also do, you can see the response is an array. If you want the response to be the actual books, you can just do response, get data. It just it makes it less nested. So there you go. Cool. So that's the first way. Actually, let's take a look at how to do variables. So first let's change this one to use the other query, which has variables, which is uh, querying for one book. So this would be, yeah, it's just passing the ID. Say we want three, this should work. There we go. So let's see how to do that in here. So let's just change the query up here. So book id it's id and title author and we just have to accept the parameters in here so let's say get book we can name it i don't think you have to name it but let's name it anyways id is of type id and it's required and that should do it and the variables we have to change let's see this is hard coded in so we don't need this one so the ID is just put three in here. 
and this should work as well. There we go. There's that book. And there is that book with ID of three. So let's see how we can make use of mutations. So let's quickly do a mutation here. So we have one called create book, create book. And I think you have to pass it a title, new book an author, let's say Andre and a category. Let's say just one, it's, it's an int. And let's just say ID and title. Okay. Okay, so 35 is that new book we just created. And we can do the same thing in our code here. So let's put in the variables first. So I'm going to do title, awesome new book. And the author is Andre. And the title, uh, sorry, the category is just an int. So let's say three. Okay, now let's get the query. I mean, the muta mutation we just did here. So we can just copy this and paste it in here. Just reinvent that. And let's use the variables instead of hard coding it here. It's going to be title, author, and category. Okay. And let's accept the params up here. So let's call it create book as well. And let's say title is a string required author string required category int required okay and you can change this to mutation as well but i'll just leave it as query should still work the same way and if i did this correctly this should make a new book from within our code and that didn't seem to work I think I have an extra closing brace here. So yeah, this one is not closing anything. So let me just delete this one and let's try that again. So there we go. Create a new one called awesome new book. And that's how you do mutations. Cool. Okay. So let's take a look at how to use just guzzle. So like I said earlier, GraphQL queries are just basic HTTP requests and you're just passing in JSON. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. So if I go to my REST client, which is Insomnia, here I have the endpoint for the GraphQL. And like I said, if you just pass it some JSON, you can, you can actually do a GraphQL query here as well, but we'll just take a look at how to do it with JSON. So if you just pass it a query, and then the GraphQL query in here. So for example, we'll do query, we'll just do it on one line, books, and we want the title and the author. This should work. I think this has to be a string as well. Let's see. Okay, so let's try this. And there we go. So this is the response that we get when we're using GraphQL. So it's the same thing. We just have to make an HTTP request and pass in some JSON with the key as query and then the GraphQL query in here. So with that knowledge, we can actually just use Guzzle and just pass in some JSON using Guzzle's functions. So let's do that. So I'm going to make a new route here. Oops, route call. Okay. And let's call it, let's call it guzzle. And since guzzle is a dependency for this other pack package we just used, we can just use it. So I'm just going to do client equals new guzzle HTTP client. And 
let me paste in some code here. And this is what makes the response. Actually, I have to add the client. Sorry, the response here. Response is client and it's a post request to the endpoint books ql laravel dot test graphql and then the second parameter is this thing I pasted in. So that just adds some JSON to the request. Okay. What is this complaining about? Okay. Okay. So um, let's see. Let's just die and dump the response. Actually, we have to die and dump the response. We have to get the body and we have to get the contents just so we can see what's coming back. Okay. Let's see if I did this correctly. And let's hit the guzzle endpoint. What did I do wrong here? I think I'm missing an opening array square bracket here. And then a closing one here. Okay, sorry, some formatting issues there. Let's see if this works. Okay, so there you go. There's the response for our GraphQL query. Let's test just JSON decode this so we can get it as an array. There you go, so there's our data, cool. And these are all the books in our database, cool. And we can also do the same thing we did above. Uh, if you just wanna get a specific book, we can just pass in an ID just to hard code it in. So ID one, that should work. There we go. There's that book, and you can also do mutations if you like. So let's quickly do a mutation here. Mute. Sorry, this is a mutation. Yeah, this is a mutation, and it's called create book. And it needs a title, say new book. It needs an author and it needs a category. One. And we'll return that. Okay. See if this works. And there we go. It created this new one. Awesome, with ID of 37. Okay, one more way I want to show you, and that's just using a wrap, another wrapper on Guzzle called ZTTP. This is the HTTP library I prefer. It just makes it easier. So there is, I'm looking at the tests here, and there's one that lets you pass in JSON like this. So I'm just gonna grab this. Actually, I have to install it first, but let me just grab that, paste it in. Let's call it ZTTP. And let's try this out. Let's install it first. And you actually have to do slash like this, okay. And let's do composer require, I think it's, what is it, kite tail, kite tail ZTTP. Sorry, that should be a forward slash. Okay, so that's done. Let's take a look here. So let's put in the URL here. And We just need one key, and that's going to be query. 
and then the value is the GraphQL query. So let's quickly do what we did before. Query, say books, say title and author. Close that out. And that should work. Let's just die and dump response JSON. And let's see if this works. So let's do ZTTP. And there we go. There's our data. There's all our books. And we can do exactly the same thing we did in here. We can pass in parameters and we can also do mutations, which I won't show you because it's exactly the same as we did here. So there you have it, guys. We've managed to query our GraphQL server from within a Laravel app. We've taken a look at three ways to do so, so you can pick which way you enjoy the most. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.